Hi, my name is Maya and I'm an interpreter for California State Parks and today I'm at Patrick's Point State Park at Suling Village getting ready to show you the dance house. The dance house is actually a deconstructed living house. So this house was opened up for the purpose of ceremony. And so whenever anyone would have a ceremony, they would open their house to the community and it would look like this, except for this little walkway right here. And so this, the, the walkway right here, this ramp is for elders to be able to participate in ceremony. So what do we do in this house? We have um, brush dances and flower dances, which are a healing ceremony, the brush dance, and a flower dance is a coming of age ceremony for a young girl becoming a woman. And this house is also made out of redwood. And there's different features of a living house that you can see compare side to side at the village. All the benches are the rib cage of the house, so all the walls. These rocks along the edge are the same rocks that would be along the, the living house's walls. So this kind of represents the walls and these corners represent the walls of a living house. And so you can see that there's kind of like a gap between the wall and the pit. And this is it's this, it looks the same in a, in a regular living house as this dance house. So there's this gap for um, materials and storage of stuff. So you'd keep baskets in this area in a living house and different things that you needed like food and just day to day things. And then as you go into the pit, it looks the same as a living house. And this is where they would usually sleep. And this is also where you have ceremony. So when it looks like this, it's during the ceremony. And then when you're done with ceremony, you would put your house back together. But for the purpose of learning at Sumeg, they keep this one open so everybody can see what it would look like. And so you'd have your family and they would sleep around the fire down in the pit and they would do most of the most of everything down here and then also in ceremony they have uh maybe like 50 people in here lined up shoulder to shoulder um with a a man and a girl and a man and a girl and then we go all the way around the pit um to practice ceremony some of the ceremonies that are held here are brush dances and flower dances. And so a flower dance, like I said before, is a coming of age ceremony for a young girl becoming a woman. And so she's in a, a period of her time where she's not completely uh, human. And so she's a spirit being. And so she's going through a transition. And it, the other dance is a brush dance. And that's for the healing of a sick baby or an elder. And so that's when they're small and they're either sick or their their family wants a good life for them and a healthy life for them so they have this dance and the brush dance consists of um, lots of community members coming out and participating and different tribes coming out to um, support this family and the baby to have a good life and a healthy life and so they would come out into certain spots like this place and all gather here maybe uh, on a Thursday they would dance for two rounds which are about an hour and so they would dance in this pit with men and women for an hour and they would do it um, do two rounds so it would be about two hours on a Thursday night and then they have a rest day and then on a Saturday night. On a Saturday night, they would come back here and they would start dancing at dusk for um, all night. So they would have probably around eight to 12 rounds, depending on how fast they're going. And so those are all about an hour piece. And they dance all the way until the sun comes up. And we have a 
finish up round where they come out in shell dresses and uh, basket caps and different feathers, morning feathers for men and necklaces and things like that. A flower dance consists of a girl coming here with um, what we like to call like a, a team of people like um, the Sune, which is the the person that talks to the fire. I'm not going to lose that. The person that talks to the fire, the grandmother, the female attendant for the girl, the attendant for the the person that talks to the fire, and um, there's a male attendant. And that's kind of like the team that she gets brought over to as the girl is transitioning. So she lives in this house. So this this is where she sleeps, this is where she eats, and she's fasting th during this time. So she's only having one meal a day. And she the other hours that she's awake, she's drinking acorn water. And she's getting ready to become a woman. And so she doesn't see her family for that week, that 10 days. And she, she's away from her family, so she stays in here with the, the team that I just had talked about. And she stays here until she, she's ready. And she does different things like a run. She bathes in different spots um, along the coast of Agate Beach, which is just below Patrick's Point. And she pretty much just lives in the village. And I had the opportunity to uh, be a part of a flower dance for myself when I was 12. And that was pretty cool for me. And I've been, I've participated in a lot of other flower dances for a lot of other younger girls. Thank you so much for listening. If you want more information about Yurok culture, check out the Sumic programs and the 